<clears throat> well, hey guys, it's finally here. The bulldozer, AMD FX 8150. I'm going to be doing, um, finally got it today. Today is November 8th, 2012. Uh, it came out almost a month ago and uh, it took forever to get here, which is a problem that I'll cover in my conclusion. But this is just going to be a quick performance teaser. Um, I've already done all the benchmarks on the system behind me of the uh, 1100 T at stock speed, so I'm going to rip that apart and uh, throw the FX in uh, tonight and do sort of a, a few of the benchmark run, runs throughs at uh, stock speeds, kind of do a bit of a teaser, upload that video, and then I'll actually make the main review video and uh, do the intro for that. I actually haven't done the intro for it. Um, I apologize for the camera, I just borrowed this off my buddy, see if it's any better than my tablet or my phone, but. Uh, We'll see, I'm going to do a quick unboxing of this guy right here that I'll take you through, um, sort of on the camera, on the bench here. Um, it's a processor, there's not much to see, but uh, then we'll get her slotted into the, uh, into the system and see what this thing can do. Now, I know we've all seen the reviews and things like that, or at least most of us have seen the reviews. It doesn't look that promising, but I guess we're going to come to our own conclusion. Um, let's just hope it doesn't end up actually being a garden trowel rather than a bulldozer. So I'll unbox it and we'll get going. Okay guys, here's the uh, 8150, it's actually not a box, it's a tin, this is the first computer component I've ever had come in a tin, so you can hear it's kind of it's kind of pushed in and things like that from shipping, but it's a pretty cheap tin, so I'd kind of expect that. Uh, just take you around the outside of the box, it is probably the coolest processor box I've ever seen. A little blur about how this is going to be the fastest computer you've ever owned, I don't know if I'll believe that, a bunch of other kind of... Uh, various languages about various other useful, useless things. A little blurb about the FX8 core processor. It's the CPU itself. Come on, camera focus. There we go. AMD FX8150. And back to here. So, it's actually just, I've broken the seal already. I'll just pull the top off here with one hand. It's kind of amateur hour, but. This thing's ridiculous. You can see the rest of my bench, a lot of stuff going on here, but there we go. Finally got the top off. There's no kind of weird packaging or anything like that. It's all just kind of loose inside this tin, which is somewhat disappointing. We've got a processor manual. I've never even opened one of those before. And this I thought was interesting. It is a warning, please update your bias. Thing, but if think about it, if you are buying a brand new system with a brand new motherboard and a brand new FX CPU, how do you update your BIOS unless you've got another one kicking around? So most most motherboards will work because the motherboards have been out for a while. But uh, so I'll save the processor for last. I'll have a look at the heatsink here. And this is a to be honest, this is absolutely identical to the heatsinks I've seen at AMD past couple of years, it's their standard high performance heat pipe, well, high performance, right? Heat pipe cooler with their tiny little fan on it, pre-applied thermal paste and whatnot. The usual suspect, it's got two heat pipes in it, and these things are normally quite loud when you get the fan speed rolling on them. You really have to use, uh, like, some sort of fan reduction on them, otherwise they're really annoying. Oh, just got a text message from somebody, probably not important. Have a nice AMD FX unlocked FX badge if the camera will focus here. There we go. Probably put that on the wall with some of the other ones I've been putting up there. And here we have the processor itself. It's a processor. It's not much to say about it. AMD FX. So I'm just going to be throwing it in uh, that system right there. There we go, camera focuses. And um, it'll be identical, except it won't have the 1100T in it. It'll have the FX processor in it. Okay, guys, here it is. It lives. It worked, booted up first time. No problems or anything like that there, so that's good. Um, she's just laying right under there. You can see I'm in the uh, bias screen for my Crosshair 5 formula here. Um, one thing I will note that Turbo Core came disabled by default, and my RAM is also running at a lower speed than uh, it's rated for as well. 
but uh, as you can see I'm using BIOS uh, 0813 which is the last time I checked it was the uh, latest BIOS from the uh, ASUS website um, and then you can see some of the specs there so CPU speed, target speed, current memory speed that'll change like, a, like I said I already changed it uh, the turbo mode speed which is supposed to be up to 4.2 gigahertz uh, hyper transport speed and the north bridge speed so that's all pretty cool seems to be going so I will uh, reboot it, fire it back up and then uh, start running a few benches on it okay guys I've run into a bit of an interesting problem here um, it seems like Windows is only actually seeing six cores uh, so you see the task manager, there's six graphs, and then if you look in CPU-Z, it's also only seeing it as a six-core, six-thread CPU. Uh, the turbo seems to be working okay. It's kind of bouncing between 3.9 and 4.2, um, but it's definitely kind of um, concerning that I'm not seeing all eight processing cores, so I'm going to try BIOS update and uh, see if that fixes thing off. This is the exact same insta Windows installation as the, um, the Hexacore Phenom. Uh, I just pulled it out and plugged this guy back in and it should recognize eight threads, but I will I'll do a BIOS update and see what happens here. Okay guys, well I think I fixed it. Turns out it wasn't a BIOS issue um, because what I did is I tried turning off. I disabled all of the cores that were listed in the BIOS and then I rebooted to um, to Windows and it was still two processing cores and I kind of tried all the different levels disabling um, some of them and things like that and it's still the maximum I was able to get was six processing cores um, so that leads me to believe obviously you can't turn off processing core one and two in the BIOS that's why it's not there so what I did is I had a OCZ solid three drive that I was going to put in my LAN computer that I'm building here it's just a 60 gig um, kicking around so I decided to uh, throw that into the system and it was totally fresh and just throw windows on there and see what happens and voila here we have the eight cores so it must be a windows limitation uh, that you can't really i guess it makes sense you can't really go back or go have more processing cores than you start with i guess so um i'm going to install a few well obviously i'm going to get my drivers and things like that and i'm going to install a few benchmarks to the system tonight just so i can get a few uh, sort of numbers off obviously it'll be completely unparable because uncomparable because I'll be running uh, different settings. It takes me quite a long time to get a hard drive set up or a Windows installation set up for benching the way I want it. And I'm running a different solid state drive as well. So uh, that will also um, be unacceptable as far as comparing them. It'll give us sort of a rough idea. So I'm going to get cracking on with that. And uh, hopefully I can have some numbers um, spit off tonight and a video up in a couple days. Okay, here we go. Okay, guys, here we've got the... Um first results in for 3D Mark 11. You can see that we're running at uh, 86, 85. This is purely stock, stock on the graphics cards and everything like that. And the, uh, the most important part I think is the uh, physics score which is the CPU score which is uh, 6276. Um, just comparing that with the uh, stock 1100T. Obviously everything, this has turbo on and the 1100T had turbo on but uh, just comparing those stock uh, scores, we're looking at about a 300 point increase in uh, the overall score and uh, about an 800 point increase on the physics score. So a little bit of a boost as well, which is pretty good. And I uh, will uh, continue on. Obviously, like I said before, this isn't a full apples to apples because we've got the different solid state and the Windows installation is uh, quite a bit leaner on this system at the moment, but uh, I just a uh, bit of a teaser for you guys. Okay, here we have the 3D Mark Vantage scores um, initially, so I'm looking at a 25082 on the uh, score for the well, performance score, and then 191 or 19018 for the CPU score. I'm comparing this uh, just quickly to the charts on the computer back there. I'm looking at um, a negligible increase as far as the P score goes. I think it was like 400 points. But the CPU score uh, did jump around um, just under 3,000 points, which is uh, pretty good so far. So um, you can hear the fan on the H80s ramped up a little bit now as um, it was going through the CPU load test and things like that in Vantage. So I think I'm probably only going to do 3D Mark 06 and uh, Unengine Heaven for tonight. 
and then uh, go to bed because I am very tired. It is um, focus. Come on here. No, well it says no, 12:53 a.m. and I've been up for a while, so I'll crack on here and see what I can do. Okay, and to wrap up tonight, we've got the 3D Marco 6 numbers in for the FX processor. So, um, to be honest, I was pretty surprised by this guy right here. We've seen gains in 3D Mark Vantage and in 3D Mark 11 compared to a stock 1100T. But that is abysmal. That is completely... The only way to really say it is just bad, but... Uh, 17971 that's 2000 less than the stock 1100T and I haven't run it with this exact configuration but I assume that the Intel system is probably going to score stock at least 25,000 um, and once you overclock it will be close to 31,000 anyways like the the single thread of performance so far seems to be absolutely uh, terrible but I did notice a lot of weird sort of fluctuation and um, not only power consumption, but in uh, performance as well while running the benchmark. So I'm going to probably rerun it again tomorrow when I'm not so hard on sleep um, and go from there. And also one thing we can note is that uh, the CPU score is 5895 compared to an average of around 6000 on the um, 1100T system. So that's also down a little bit as well, which is weird because that is fairly multi-threaded. I know it doesn't scale fully with eight processing cores, but I know it'll use up six pretty much all the time. So again, we're seeing a bit of the difference in clock to clock performance here. So um, it is past one o'clock and I am going to sleep. And this will be it for probably the preview. I might do a bit of a conclusion here to wrap things up for you guys. Um, but yeah, so far the AMD FX processor that took forever to get here and was a total pain in the butt to get working properly it turns out it is not performing well it's performing the way that the reviewers said it would who would have guessed have a good one I'm going to bed